we've experienced a contrary to date. With just the mere uh, announcement of the name and an intention, uh, a lot of young people have reached out, and the type of young people who are reaching out are saying to us, I've never participated in the democratic process. In fact, now I feel that there's a party which really speaks to me, a party that's not born out of uh, ideologies that are foreign to us, but born out of a recognition and an appreciation of our plight as young people and that something needs to happen. So what we bring is fundamentally different. We've spoken about the differences of our value system, which is family, Ubuntu, community, and multiracialism. And building a party which is really informed from an ideological perspective, both an African ideology, which is Ubuntu, as I mentioned earlier on. But obviously what, what, what is most noticeable and very important for us in our identity is the name of Shilova. Shilova is a very important name. It's a Tsonga name. It's an indigenous African name because we are proud of who we are and we want to build our foundation on the basis of who we are as African people. Because we recognize that much of what, what has been happening in the country, we claim that we've got 11 official languages, but I'm speaking to you now in, uh, on a SABC platform uh, and speaking English predominantly because of the mainstream uh, and commercialization of two languages in Perth specifically, which is English and Afrikaans. And all the languages are subservient to those and they have no economic value. And for us, we're saying these are a number of things that we need to deal with decisively. And because if you can't ensure that the, all of the other African languages have also economic value, then there won't be any basis for us to continue speaking these. And we'll just continuously be assimilating as a young pair, as young people, as a young nation, which is not correct, and it's not the type of national identity that you want to build uh, for the country. So we bring something fundamentally different. Many people will tell you we must overhaul the system, we must change the system. The moment they get in the system, they become the biggest uh, protectors of the system, and which tells you that the system actually does not have many challenges. In fact, it's the people who get into these positions who are unable to work within the system and deliver change. Now, I've worked within a system of public governance, and I have a full appreciation of its complexity and how to move public governance to deliver on strategic objectives and also to improve societal outcomes and the socioeconomic conditions. I've done that in my time as an executive mayor in Midvale, and it's on the basis of that appreciation, experience, and understanding that I'm able to confidently say we are will be in a position to be able to demonstrate it. And so let's let's be practical about. It. For instance, you've said that you're going to do a lot of work to ensure building the institutional capacity of the party. Um, how and how you intend to? Uh, clarify to South Africans your value proposition and what it's going to be at the moment. To a youth, for instance, we, we mentioned uh, uh, the apathy. Some have actually deliberately not participated in elections because of it being a protest vote. They're more interested in involvement in public or political affairs. So not just having a seat at the table, but being able to influence decision making and implementation. We firmly believe that what people characterize as voter apathy amongst young people is not correct. It is a demonstration of a lack of choice, a lack of option for young people, a lack of a political vehicle that speaks specifically and born out of the frustrations that plague young people. So we are a party that is born and fashioned out of that crisis. That's the first point. The second point is as we build the institution, we need to ensure that we've got one, uh, our vision, mission, and objectives properly set out. We embark on a process of public consultation that informs our policy basis, and we engage in a policy formulation, engaging all uh, stakeholders in, 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 in the country, and ensuring that we lobby as South Africans to be part of this process to share their experience. But equally, what will be fundamentally different by ours will be anchored on the issues facing young people. And remember, we know these young people is the, sick, the young people who are predominantly the beneficiaries of the 350s that they get from the state, but who are also coming from households which have a single uh, parent household and the majority is a, is a is a black woman. So we understand the plight we know who we are speaking to. So our processes will respond to the challenges we know that we also ourselves come from. Okay. So as we build the institution with internal processes, with building more capacity, we'll be able to actually demonstrate it to South Africa. I want to ask a personal question. You say you had irreconcilable differences between 
uh, yourself and your former leader Herman Mashaba and I want to talk about um, political education what is your vision for it if we're talking about a new generation whose preoccupations are particularly uh, different some say while some may struggle with what the you know elders may call a sentimentality vote but you can't be sentimental about something that you don't know Yeah, look, I think the first correction, um, I never said I had irreconcilable differences with Herman. He said that, and I was reporting and sharing to South Africa and what he said to me. So he has not even clarified those to date, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's immaterial at this stage, but it's important just for public record. So we're clear on that one. Um, and I mean, the, the, the second part of your, of your statement and question um, is, is uh, we, we need to ensure that uh, we inform voters. In fact, voters need to understand that voting means that they are voting for something, they are voting for an interest that's stake in a democracy which benefits them directly through the sustained provision of public goods. It may be education, it may be ESCOM, it may be provision of water, it may be a safe, clean environment. It may manifest in various ways to, for, to, for, to enable them to get access to the level of public good or public goods that they, they, that they demand from the state. So then the voters need to be selfish and appreciate that they are the ones ultimately who give people a mandate. They are the ones who ensure that uh, they decide to which direction their country must go and they must vote for something. And I think there's a big crisis when we allow people to set the narrative that an election should be about who, those who, who must be punished and those who are angels and devils, etc., etc., We should never allow ourselves to lower the bar because what, once we, we, we allow a narrative to, to be dominated through media and other opposition parties that it's an anti-vote and someone must be punished, we lower the standard of leadership because all we want to do now is punish one over the other and we don't scrutinize the capability and abilities of those who are uh, presenting themselves to be able and competent to lead this country. So we must never allow ourselves to move this, the, I mean, to set the bar so low that a mere matriculant can become a president in this country. We must demand better of ourselves and we must hold people to account, but we must scrutinize who is saying uh, they must be voted for and on what basis and what capacity and what have they done in the past as well. I really think that voters must play a bigger role in this and they must actually uh, uh, interrogate all of these things we put, including myself as well, okay. because it needs to be tested. What is Bomani Baloy's public record, right, and etc.